So let's move on to the new chapter, which is chapter four. Uh, we're going to talk about some chemical reactions. In uh, aqueous solution. So uh, we're going to talk about the, the reactions in uh, aqueous solution. Here. So the obviously first thing we need to do is find out what does the aqueous and solution means. Okay, so this is something what we're gonna do uh, first in the, the first part of the chapter four. So you know chemical reaction now, but uh, we don't know what those two are. Okay, so aqueous simply means it's uh, uh, aqua. Since aqua means it's water, so aqueous simply means it's uh, surrounded by by water. So uh, when does the compounds separate by the water? Uh, normally they become in uh, form of in a form of uh, ion. You guys remember this right? Ions, cation and anions, right? Uh, so it's positive cation, negative anion. So uh, this is the where you can use the chemical equations. So you have a sodium chloride okay, in the crystal form, solid phase. Uh, but when it goes into water, you put the, the positive charges, cation and anion. And then uh, for physical status, you can say AQ, meaning aqueous, I'm sorry, AQ, aqueous uh, phase, meaning they are now surrounded by the lots of water uh, molecules. So the solution is simply uh, homogeneous. You know what homogeneous means now, right? Homogeneous mixtures. And that shows the uh, solute and this uh, solvent. Okay. So uh, whenever you think about the homogeneous mixture here, um, try to get the, all the substance, all the mixed substance, and pick the highest uh, quantity among all the other substance, that the highest and the, the quantity, uh, that is your solvent. Okay, and all the others are become your solute. Okay. So uh, you have a homogeneous mixture and you have a several numbers of substance, of, of course it's a mixture. Uh, the highest one in quantity is a solvent and all the other minor, you know, like groups will be solute there. So if you do have the solute uh, mixed in the solvent nicely, equally um, distributed in the space, in their solution, uh, we call them uh, solution. <coughs> So the makes sense, right? So is, yeah. Can I move on? Good. So when we talk about some aqueous solution, uh, we can talk, think about now two things: is uh, electrolytes and non-electrolytes. So the electrolyte is the one that dissociates in water into all ion forms. <clears throat> and then uh, non-electrolyte is that do not. They don't dissociate in the water. So they're not going to break in a part of the form of ions, like cation anions over here. Okay. So the, why is it so important? Uh, so uh, what it really means in here, electrolyte means the, that we show pretty good, uh, good electrical uh, conductivity. 
So electric light is, has a potential that uh, the electric light is the uh, substance that has potential when it goes into water, the mixed solution, then that solution will show you good electrical, electrical uh, conductivity. Meaning, uh, you're going to have a, a flow of charge. Uh, do, you know, do you know what is a electric city? We have electric city everywhere, right? Here in the, this room and in the building and any other places we use electric city. What might be the definition of electric city? Yeah. So electric city simply means a flow of electrons. So if you have uh, electrons moving into certain circuits or some other pathway, uh, they, we can say, oh, there's electricity uh, there in the system. So um, whenever you have uh, electricity here, this is negative charge moving, uh, we have electricity here, meaning if you have any solutions that has some type of ions, okay, cations or anions, and this is a positive charge and negative charge. Uh, so when you try to make some motion or movement of the charged like a particle like electron or protons uh, You need to have some ions that can carry the electrical charge through the system uh, So in that way you should have some ions in the solution and they become very good electronically conduct conductive material So conductive means it's, uh, it conveys joy so if it's good electrical conductivity means it can be well conducted in electricity. So you can have electricity well in that system. Makes sense, right? Okay. okay. So um, this is the, uh, and the non-electrolytes is the substance. They do not turn into in the form of ions. So they will not carry the charge through the system. So we cannot have a, uh, electricity in the system because they will not carry anything in the water. Okay? They just do not anything. Uh, so this will not, this will show you very poor uh, electrical conductivity, poor. Conductivity. <clears throat> so let me give you some example over here. Um, like I said before, If you put this sodium chloride over here, right? And like I said, you can put it in the ionic form, ion forms, right? Can kind of an anion. This way. And if you have, this means there are there uh, with water, lots of lots of numbers of water. That's what it means by sodium uh, chloride solutions over here. And then when you try to put uh, some battery attached to it, I can try to get some electricity okay. over there with the electric potential difference. You're going to have uh, electricity that makes worse, uh, make it work in the, uh, the system. So this is possible, but when you only have the ones that in NHCl in the crystal form, uh, they will not carry the charge. So there will be no electricity. There will be no electricity. Okay. Makes sense, right? So if that conveys the charge, you can have a really good electricity working in the system. Uh, so you can uh, have this the light bulb is turned on. So the um, there's one example in our like a practical example we find every day in the. Uh, in our re reality. Have you ever seen the signs that the do not touch any, you know, electronics with the wet hands? You see the signs like time to time, right? But here's the thing. Uh, if you have uh, just water, there's no ions in it, right? There's no ions in water yet. If it's pure water, it's, there's no ions in it. So the water itself is not electrolyte yet because there's no ions in it. Makes sense, right? So, technically speaking, if you have a wet hands, 
Okay, when you touch the electronics, uh, it's actually safer theoretically because water should be electric conductive uh, proof to your hand. So if you have a wet hand, it should be safer when you touch the electronics. But the sign says totally the other way. Can you think why? Because so, of the uh, charge that you may have on your hand. Perfect. Absolutely. That's great. Uh, so when you have a wet hand, uh, like you said, uh, it becomes automatically aqueous uh, solutes, uh, the uh, solution with the ions because the, your, your skin is an ion pumping machine. Uh, so when you have a wet hands, you have a lot of ions automatically in that water. And that makes really, really good and electrically conductive. So it's actually very dangerous. If you touch something, electronics with the wet hand, uh, that's very dangerous act you may not want to do ever. Okay? Makes sense, right? That's the one example. All right, so if that is the case, uh, the one thing we need to think about is the how, what makes the uh, soluble in water and what others not. Okay? So if you think about the lithium, potassium, or sodium, and some ammonium, this is kind of a cation. But those, if you look at those one here, uh, you can actually find them on the periodic table in the first column, which is group one elements. So the group one element becomes the uh, positive one charge because of the location of the periodic table. The first column, first group one elements will become one positive charge cation. Always. That's why you have a lithium cation, potassium cation, sodium cation. Uh, this is a kind of exception, but I'm just gonna hear ammonium cation here. But it's all one plus, one plus, one plus, one plus here. And then they will, when they uh, pair with uh, any anions, so this is a metal cation. You have a non-metal anion. Of course, there will be a non-metal because. Uh, this is where you're gonna have some element wants to be negatively charged, uh, but on the right side, this will be not metal. And then when they pair up these two, they're always, those ion form is always soluble in water. Always. No exception. It's always the uh, soluble in water. Okay? So, meaning, so that kind of makes sense. We just did the sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. So we, we know when it put the sodium chloride into water, you know there will be sodium cation and chlorine anion uh, because there has to be soluble in water because group one elements over there. So if I give you one example over here, if I give you maybe potassium chloride, will it be soluble in water or not? Yes, right? Because this is also in the group one, okay? So uh, this is uh, something you can try to uh, just kind of memory. I actually gonna give you the solubility rule table uh, that you don't have to memorize. I'm gonna put that on the exam too. Uh, but you know, this is just case you can just memorize it over time naturally over here. And then uh, there's another thing I can sell is the whenever you have a group seven. And this is where you can find, if you look at those over here, chlorine, okay, chlorine, bromine, I know over here, right? So those are the ones that also pair with any metal cation that tend to be also soluble in water. Okay, but this is a kind of a, uh, unique because there's few exceptions here. Uh, we have a silver cation and mercury cation and then uh, we have a lead cation. Okay. So if that is the case, uh, ex those exceptions, those exceptions that uh, there will not be soluble in water. So if those halogens and ions are paired with those 
three exceptional cation, metal cation, will not be soluble in water. So it's insoluble in water. But other than those three, they will become soluble in water. Okay. So this is something uh, that you you're all gonna see this in the uh, soluble water table anyway. Okay. So don't worry about it. But this is uh, something I can. So let me actually give you one example. Okay. I'm going to tell you more about the solubility rule. Okay. Uh, here. So let's try to do calcium chloride plus sodium phosphate. Okay. So uh, Here's the thing. The first thing what we need to do, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, double displacement reactions. Meaning, you have a A and B plus C and D. Uh, what you can do is uh, do out and inner combination. Okay. So uh, as a product wise, you're gonna have A D plus B C. Okay. Uh, this is what you're gonna do. Okay. So this is what we call double displacement reactions because you're gonna displace the position uh, twice, uh, in and out. Okay. So A, B, and B, C. So what's once on the right hand side, A, B, and C, D. On the product side, will be A, B, and B, C. Okay. Makes sense, right? Okay. So in this case, uh, what you can do is the you're gonna uh, first of all, you know, the calcium chloride here we have a uh, two. Chlorine over there, right? You know why, right? Because the calcium is where? Second. Perfect. So it will be 2 plus, but the chlorine has group 7. So we'll have a negative 1. So that's why we have a 2 chlorine for each calcium over here. Makes sense, right? So calcium chloride will have a calcium and Cl2. Makes sense, right? Okay. And then this one, the sodium is plus 1. Perfect. This is group one. Good. Uh, this is uh, something uh, you kind of have to memorize: polyatomic anion, oxygen. Uh, this is uh, phosphate, so it has negative three charge. Okay. So that's why uh, each uh, sodium cation has a one plus charge. So to make the neutral ion compound, it has to have three sodiums there. Okay. So three sodium and one phosphate. So you have a sodium phosphate over here. Okay. Makes sense, right? Three, and because uh, this is three minus. So uh, you don't have to know, but this is what it looks like. Okay. So uh, that is why. Uh, but uh, we haven't covered the Lewis structure yet. Um, so we'll, you don't have to do this, but maybe you can just memorize this negative three. Um, are you going to take in Camp 2 next semester? I think you'll do this in Zenkem 2 more. Uh, I think we'll do this uh, this semester as well, but you'll do more in Zenkem 2. Uh, especially uh, if you guys are uh, biomed or chem major, you're also taking Olga 1 and 2, right? Uh, you will see a lot of the, uh, the yeah, that one. So, but let's not worry about that so much just uh, at the moment. Uh, but just I can tell you what's the thing we need to do with the uh, double displacement uh, reactions. So whenever you do this, I keep telling you the charge because when you rematch, you have to do it again. Okay? You have to do it again, right? So uh, you have uh, the calcium. And that means you have a calcium right here with the phosphate. Okay? You have a calcium with the phosphate now. And you have a sodium and here. So the problem is, uh, you have a two plus, but this is three negative. So each calcium is two plus, but each phosphate is three negative. Okay. So uh, what we need to do is try to get the the minimum common multiple numbers between these two, two and three. What might be that? Six. So if that is a six, it's very simple now. It's a two plus to be plus six and negative six, so it can be zero, neutral. It has to be uh, six divided by two. That is the three. 
So there'll be three calcium in here. And for negative three, so six divided by negative three is negative two, uh, I mean two. So there will be two. Okay. So now we good. Okay. Makes sense, right? And then uh, this is kind of easy now because it's a plus one, negative one. It's just okay that way already. So uh, think about it. If you need to have uh, three calcium and two phosphate for one calcium phosphate, you need to have here at least three. Because each calcium chloride has only one calcium in it. To make one calcium phosphate, you need to have at least three over here. Make sense, right? And here saying you have to have two at least for phosphate, you only have a one phosphate and sodium phosphate, so it has to be two. So now it kind of makes sense that we have a three calcium. It means three times two, six chlorines, right? And there's a two phosphate, means you have two times three, six sodium. Uh, so that's why this is okay by one, plus one, negative one, so has to be six. So six times one is for each is six sodium and six chlorine. <clears throat> okay. Kind of makes sense. So, okay. So the, uh, what you can do is that this is all happening in water. Okay. So you can say aqueous here, as you can see, um, the chlorines and the sodium has to be all soluble in water. Okay? You see this chlorine not paired with the silver or lead or this mercury. So it has to be soluble in water for sure. And this is a pair with the sodium, so it has to be always soluble in water. So these two are the aqueous in here. And uh, but these two, uh, this is also soluble in water, uh, but this is not. Sodium phosphate is the not soluble in water. Uh, so normally, group two is not really soluble in water much. And the phosphate is not the good one to be dissolved in water as well. So this is kind of bad combination for the dissolving in water. That's why these two were actually uh, in solid phase. Uh, so we call this precipitations. And this is what we call precipitate. Uh, so this will, when you mix these two, it's all clear solution. And then when you mix these two, you'll see some like a precipitate come out from the mixture, which is precipitate because it's precipitation. Whenever they mix in together the mixture, this is the one that is not dissolved in water. So you actually come out from the mixture in solid phase. Uh, so we call this precipitation. Even heard about this one, right? Precipitation has come up. So it's, this is not uh, the one that dissolves in water well. Okay? It's very, very uh, poor solubility in water. So that's why. Uh, I love I love this the example because the um, do you know what is the only matter that is non organic in your body? It's a bone structure. Uh, your bone is mainly made of calcium phosphate. Kind of funny, right? So if you think about if if calcium phosphate is also dissolved in water, we'll be walking like octopus because we're running with bone bone structure because it will dissolve in blood. Blood is water based. Your body is seventy percent water. Um, but luckily, we have a calcium phosphate as our frame and a bone structure. That's why we have a very good uh, dealing with the gravitational force on the daily life. Makes sense, right? So. So the I'll just stop here today because the I don't wanna I wanna go into the other example and I'll ask them based on Wednesday. But let's just try